to talk through some dream analysis and really allowing yourself to go on a route of self-discovery without thinking too much about it, but trust the process of your own subconsciousness and the superconsciousness to allow you to see what you need to see. I'm going to give you this story through example. So I love dream analysis and I love myth and... Uh, Anyway, I use it all the time to try to find out what it is I need to know about different layers of my, of my own personal process. Um, anyway, the uh, last night's dream space, I had had part of a dream where I was following a constellation that was a dagger um, that was the energy of the apocalypse. The apocalypse is like Tarot Key 20, and, which is judgment, which is the rebirth of self, the destruction of the old ego and the birth of the self. So anyway, birth of a new day through surrender of the old ego. Anyway, I was traveling in a vehicle that uh, was driven by a nice serving man, a masculine, who reminded me of a friend of mine, but a man about 40. And I was in the middle, and there was also someone who was much like my daughter, around 20 years old. And that character didn't say anything. I was the one talking and guiding, and uh, and he could talk too, but he, um, he had a tendency to stop too much out of worry and concern for others. And so how did this play out? The, this played out in the space of traversing through construction areas and roadways that were blocked and the foretelling of another dagger in the sky when there was already one that we were trying to go in and uh, move the energies before it harmed too many people, right? So this becomes the multiple consciousness of all the selves inside the self, all the people, all the, all the selves that are not only within my own head of containment, but within the aspect of reality of, of quantum entanglement, all the selves. So anyway, you have to forgive me, by the way, I'm a little obsessed with seeing myself right now because my eyes have been out processing a bunch of granular stuff for days and they're very swollen that aside um and i'm having to see it <laughs> rather than just feel it i'm like oh this is an experience so anyway i'm traversing this dream space and i'm the middle character so i become i become more the subconsciousness speaking or subconsciousness married to self-consciousness and he's driving so he becomes like the mind versus the body. I'm more relatively the body going, hey, you need to listen to me and follow my guidance um, because I've got my feet in the earth. I've got my roots in the earth as subconsciousness, the, uh, the everything neck down, right? Relatively. Everything's like yin and yang. It's always relative to some other perspective. Anyway, when these two characters are working this vehicle um, represented in this story by my daughter, which is, her name is Unity, the one self who sits and just observe everything goes oh yes yes there that is and gracefully accepts all the change in movement um and is along for the ride because it's a great story anyway the the uh character that i was engaged with with this driver to go get us to our destination which is the mind driving the perception as you know holding the wheel and looking out the window and turning the vehicle the vehicle which is this projected view um, got hung up when getting down into some construction area more in the subconscious uh, that was uh, because he could see that some friends he knew were laying outside and dying as if it was a battlefield even though it's construction area because it is earth and earth is the trial ground anyway so I'm like you have to I'm telling him I'm like you have to leave them we don't have time for this um, this is not your path let them do their work, right? Um, we have to carry on with our duty, our mission. We have to care, walk our path. And so we carry on, we go, and then at some point we get hung up underneath this construction area and get captured by these characters and we're shrunk down to like toddler size. So toddler size is, a, is an awesome size because toddler size is when you're very open to see, feel, and perceive really clearly between self and subconscious minds. 
And so you really want to bring in that space of observation with the sensory field of a toddler because you're intelligent enough to see that I am something, I'm not just a baby, um, who's being held, I can now reflect, but I'm also not an adult, so I'm not limited by my um, previous experiences. And we're put by this fairy-like character into the hollow of what I thought was a room, but it was actually the hollow of a tree. And inside the hollow of a tree, uh, they've taken our bags, our baggage, which, which would be represented by our memories, and they've locked him inside another hollow, another inner ring of the tree, and locked the door with fairy dust. And so it was a casting of illusions that we've been, number one, captured, and it's a playroom. So the illusion was that we were captured in somewhere we didn't need to be, even though the perceptual field outside where we just were was a battlefield of, uh, of this worldly chaos and construction. And um, so then we're put into the inner room, the next inner room, which was like, here, just go in here. You're going to go into this playroom. And I find myself navigating this space where my hand, then as I'm going around realizing that fairy dust had just closed off our baggage so that we could focus on this playroom right here, this inner, next inner ring, like, um, like the rings on electron fields, right? As you move inner, more inner towards yourself in the subatomic particles, you, you traverse these journeys to get towards the center of every cell, of every subatomic particle. And um, anyway, the aspect is that my left hand, which is the passive hand, is the, and it's reflected in the character of the high priestess. I'm looking for my card. I've got one version of her right here. There she is right there. If the reflections aren't too much there. She's holding the Akasha in her right hand and her left hand is hidden. The Akasha is the record of the memory. The active hand um, disentangles you, the sword, from the things you don't need to be entangled with. And the left hand is hidden. And I know from my own experience that the left hand is hidden to hold the base of your sexual center, to hold your root desire with compassion, that you do no harm with the active hand, that you see that all is one. And so in my dream, my left hand gets, um, I'm, I get held, I'm holding this orb, and it looks like a toy. This orb represents the heart. And I see that there's an insect on it. And this insect looks like a scorpion, and it looks like a spider. Well, these symbols are symbols for the great weaver, which is the subconsciousness, and also the procreative force of the sexual energy of, uh, of Scorpio, Scorpio, which is death, which is holy death, which is the Akasha of memory. So the ancestral strength is the hilt of the sword, which is at your sexual root. So in this dream, as I'm looking for the second sword in this constellation, I'm looking at the sword that's within me because there's always one outside of me in this parallel universe, but I need to focus on my own. And so my hand goes and I have to keep surrendering to what looks like danger, um, my desire, which is so dangerous because I can destroy with it. I can harm myself and I can harm you with my desire, just like you can do that to me and yourself. I have to be mindful of my desire. I have to cultivate my desire and not let my animal nature destroy you. We have to be wise. And how I apply this and wield this sword. So I tuck the one hand down into the hilt, which is the root of the sexual energy at the base of the first to second chakra. And I hold, I hold this energy and I wield this sword greatly that when I tell my stories and cast my spells, which are what my stories are, spell casting, that I can be a clear channel without harm, but really for bliss incarnate. Anyway, I wake from this dream knowing that I'm holding this heart of desire at the hilt of the sword. Um, and that heart is seen in so many ways. In the emperor's key right there, you'll see him holding the heart which is also at the hilt of the sword, too. Anyway, um, knowing that it's so powerful and I could get hurt at any time and I just have to keep surrendering and hold it anyway. I'm not going to hurt you and I don't want to hurt you either, but I have to hold it anyway, my great power. So I wait from the stream and I'm telling it to my husband and every time I tell a dream, I need to tell the dream out loud to somebody so that someone else hearing it will have their internal reflections allow me to hear myself better.
this is a process I've been aware of for a long time, so I'm like, may I tell you my dream um, so that I can uncover my deeper truth. And what comes out of it is the discovery of like, is there, is there a constellation that's a sword? And so I start looking and I'm like, oh, of course, Orion, who is the great hunter, um, and I always associate that character with not only Athena, the huntress, but with Sagittarius, or Archangel Michael, the southern fire, the higher self. And so, in my own personal myth, this uncovers lots and lots and lots of parallels, and I'm like, okay, okay, of course, of course, of course, the Orion Nambuil has been the only one I've ever been attracted to in the, in the constellation systems. Michael's been my primary guide that I've talked to for years and years and years, and the Sagittarian frequency through the huntress, the archer, or the archer is what I keep calling it, the one who wields the rainbow light and uh, sets the bow of perception to aim rightly. Um, anyway, so what I'm able to do by looking all, at all of this is when I study more the iota, I-O-T-A, of Orion, where the sword itself is wielded, the entire nebula itself sits in the middle of that sword, which I didn't really realize um, anyway, the brilliance of the 8 to 5 ratio with the power of the 13, which were all these teachings that are in the Tarot basics or the Universal basics, are all found therein. And so that opens a new packet of information for research. And so when you look at your myth and you look at your archetypes um, and the stories and your dreams and your self and subconsciousness, you can unpack more and more data. Anyway, I share my personal journey because this is all I have, and I love you.